Hello everyone and welcome to Steve's City Skylines. Today I thought I'd do a video showing you all the mods that I'm running in game. I'm not talking about the official DLC or the official content packs. I have actually got all of those. Other than the radio stations, I'm not interested in that. But what I want to look at are the mods that I've downloaded from the Steam Workshop that maybe if you're watching my playthroughs, you, um, you see something that maybe doesn't match your own game experience. It'll probably be one of the mods I'm running that's, that's changed things a little. And I don't always sort of credit them in the video because I just forget a lot of the mods I'm running. They're just part of my game now. Uh, and unless I'm actually having to click on a button, I don't necessarily think, oh yeah, that's, that's different from vanilla. So here is a list uh, with a brief description and maybe a little bit of an in-game demo of all the stuff that I've added to the game, which you might find useful. You may be able to pick one or two things out of there that you might use for your own game. Um, you may want to consider subscribing to the channel. That'd be lovely to have you along. If so, just click on the uh, subscribe button. Maybe hit the bell if you want notifications of, uh, of new videos. I post quite frequently, so there should be new content coming along very soon. OK, so anyway, let's get into the list, shall we? 81 tiles by Bloody Penguin. So the vanilla game gives you uh, your start square and in the middle of a five by five grid of tiles and it allows you in total to have nine of those tiles in play. There are mods that allow you to have all of those 25 tiles available. And then there's this one, which goes the whole hog and gives you the entire map to play with. So if we have a look at a map, let's have a look at this one. This is Kerrysdale Bay by Sidai. And you're probably thinking, come on, really? Do you want to build like in this lot? Um, no, I don't actually. But the reason why I have this uh, 821 tile mod enabled on this map is that Sidai put this little sort of feature right at the edge of the map, well outside the, um, the sort of 25 tile limit. Um, and what it is, this is a sewage outfall and this is fresh water collection and it's all sort of self powered with um, um, wind power there and it's piped through to the start grid. So it's, eases your start and I really like that feature it's there's enough to worry about when you're first starting without um without having to worry about sewage and uh, water and I think that's a really nice touch I like it anyway I like it so much that although I have kind of gone off this map and I'm uh, going to start with something different I'm kind of intending to edit in this sort of thing if I can to uh, to another map that I'm going to play uh so I'm keeping the 81 tile mod so I can do slightly cheaty tricks like that. So there you go, 81 tiles by Bloody Penguin. Automatic Bulldoze by Live627. A very simple mod this. If you have abandoned or burned down buildings in your city, instead of having to go and find them and manually remove them so that uh, they can redevelop, it just does it for you. That's it. Building Themes by Bloody Penguin, Bowformer and Samsung TS. So in the vanilla game, you have limited control over what buildings spawn in your areas. Uh, you can have, um, I think in my game, anyway, I think it's vanilla, you have a couple of things. You have the um, European theme or the sort of international um, generic sort of theme. And if you set that uh, when you start your map, it will influence the type of buildings that, that spawn in your various areas. But that's, that's it. If you have certain DLC, you have a little bit more control. So for instance, if you um, create uh, a zone and assign it as a green cities area, then the buildings that, that spawn will be different. There'll be these sort of self-sufficient buildings with sort of solar powers, panels and all that sort of stuff. So that's nice. It gives you a bit more variety across your map as well as other benefits. But if you really want to have a lot of different types of uh, things going on, so if you want sort of different districts to have their own kind of unique look and feel, uh, building themes allows you to do that. So for instance, maybe I have a bunch of assets that are kind of like country village sort of thing, uh, little cottages and, and um, you know, uh, sort of village halls and maybe, maybe a, a sort of a pub or something like that. And what I can do is I can group those using building themes. I can create my own theme, let's call it village. Um, and then I can assign that to a zone that I create. And then the, the game will spawn those assets 
when you uh, when you zone out for for residential say or or commercial in the case of the pub or maybe a small store or something like that so in a nutshell that's what building themes is it allows you to have more control more fine control over the types of buildings that um, are created that are spawned you have to obviously zone out an area and then assign a theme to that zone cinematic camera extended by samsung ts this is a mod that lets you create those kind of gorgeous sort of aerial overfly type videos to show off your city uh, basically in a youtube video for instance so if i do a very quick very dirty job of setting one up this is not going to look particularly good but it's just to show you how the mod works so basically you um figure out where you want your your shot to start so you sort of set up your angle um set a few things up so number of frames per second um your field of view the hide ui and unpause simulation so as you see at the moment my sim is paused uh but the idea is that when it starts all the traffic will start to flow and it'll look a lot better than it just being like a, a still shot i'm going to set it at half speed i normally have it set lower but i just want to sort of quickly show you how this works so i've got my first position click on a plus and it's basically it saves it basically puts a waypoint in with altitude and view direction and what have you and then the second one i want to be kind of zoomed in a bit let's try that and then the third one i want to be in further and over sort of here so now i'm looking at the uh, little circular town center and then the fourth one i'm going to need to come out a bit but i also then want to be around a little bit so let's go with that and then i want to be sort of coming along here looking at my i'm just coming a little bit more looking at my my this other little center and then probably for the last one where is emerson i want to be i want to sort of curve around a bit so let's go to sort of here and then the final one i want to be like that okay so i've set up a few just quick and dirty waypoints you need to play with this but then i click on this button to play it So what I find, to be honest, is that if you slow it down a bit, it looks a bit better. You don't get uh, it. It it just seems to work better for me. But there you go. Very quickly, that's cinematic camera extended. City Vitals Watch by Underground Hero. If I just drop into my game, what you have is you have a nice little button here that summarizes all the sort of key information, and you can select what you want to keep tabs on. Um, and you can click say for instance let's have say click on the um, on the line and it brings up the appropriate um, information the appropriate tabs uh, for whatever it is that you've uh, that you've selected uh, if one is available um, so there you go in a nutshell it's all nicely collected together you don't have to be sort of pausing the game and going into the city statistics view at least not quite as much um, and it's all uh, all nice and neat so that's why i use city vitals watch emergency light changer by both former very simple it just changes the uh, the light colors on the emergency lights from um, red blue which is kind of the american style uh, to blue blue which is the european british style extra landscaping tools by bloody penguin so what bloody penguin has done is he has brought in some of the map editing tools into the actual uh, game area so you can then uh, you have certain landscaping tools available so for instance you can raise land lower land uh, flatten land level terrain that sort of thing uh, he's also allowed you to place water sources so actually on this map you can see where the water's spawning from basically uh, but you can put your own in so maybe like in this park area you might um i don't want to do it <laughs> but you might want to say uh, you want uh, a boating lake or something so you would use the landscaping tools to very carefully sort of sculpt out a little depression area here 
and then put a water source in there and you can set how high that will fill to. So if you get it right, you end up with a nice lake that isn't overflowing. Um, that's nice, so it's a nice little feature. What you can also do with extra landscaping tools, you can paint in uh, certain resources. So let's go over to my farming area. So you can see there, uh, you can see the, uh, the, the fertile land there. So if I just do that and uh, let's see, let's get a bit of a bigger brush size, a bit of a bigger still. So if we look, so there you can see it's darker green. If I then paint over it, there we go. So instant fertile land. Now obviously that's really cheaty, um, but there you go. I'm just showing you the mod. So that is extra landscaping tools. Find it too by Sway and Algernon. Uh, this basically is a mod that we use uh, when we're detailing maps. So it lets you see all the assets that you've got available if you actually know how to find them. That's the real key with this. So there's the uh, there's the find it um, icon, and you have certain sort of key categories that uh, that you can that you can search for. Um, so for instance, if I just select tree, it'll find all the tree assets in the game. Um, some of them that you may not even know that you had. You can also, if I take that out of there, you can do searches for the tags, but you've, you've got to have some idea of what you're looking for. So for instance, if I was trying to detail, maybe I wanted to put a little bit of something on this, uh, this sort of uh, uh, riverbank here. I want to put like a few, I've seen them somewhere, they're like a sort of a low growing plant. So if I put plant in, um, I get lots of stuff, but is that what I want? No, that's plantation. Um, you can see it's kind of more um, bushes and stuff. Uh, so actually, if you put, well, if you start to type vegetation, that's more like it. So then you start to get things like, I mean, that's a bit big. Let's get that down. Uh, you get that sort of stuff for instance um so i'll say part of the thing with this mod is actually figuring out what things got called but it's a very useful mod for digging in there finding assets that maybe you didn't even know you had and it's very useful for when you're detailing first person camera i like this mod this one allows you it basically gives you a sims eye view of your city uh so if we let's say let's take let's take the bus driver's view uh, let's um, start the camera and it speeds it up a bit uh, you can there's all sorts of settings in this so you can change the the sort of uh, the, the speed of, of the um, first person simulation if you like um, the offsets so you notice here it's showing the very front of the bus I can move the camera position backwards or forwards a little bit to try to smooth that out I, <laughs> to be honest I don't bother I just leave it set of the defaults but you can monkey around with it to your heart's content and try and get that perfect uh, that perfect view. So there you go. You can do it with, so that was with a boss. Let's find a person um, and let's do the same thing and then start the game. So this is a person wandering around uh, and uh, yeah, I thought they were going for the bus. No, so get the idea. You can basically anything that pretty much anything that's moving, you can uh, you can follow it around. Um, never actually tried following a seagull around, uh, but you know maybe you could do that as well. Uh, so there you go. That's uh, that's the uh, the first person uh, mod. Harmony um, does absolutely nothing in itself. Does nothing to your game whatsoever. What it is, it's an enabling mod basically. And there's a number of mods that use Harmony for them to in order for them to work. Um, so there you go. That's why I've got it to make other mods work. Instant return to desktop by C Game World. Now, for me, this is kind of an essential mod because I'm running a modded game. Basically, if you're running a modded game, when you want to quit, uh, it can take minutes sometimes for the game to actually quit to your desktop. Now, this effectively, this just does it instantly. It's, it's a bit like doing Control Alt Delete uh, on a PC anyway, and uh, going into Task Manager and killing the task. The reason why it's it's kind of a biggie is that you maybe you're trying something out you've loaded up a save you, you you're trying something to see if it works <laughs> it doesn't so you need to reload that save what you don't do with a modded game is quit to menu and then load you know your previous save because what it'll do is it'll keep all those mods in memory and then when you load the save it tries to load them again 
and all sorts of bad things happen. You know, either it just won't load or it'll just totally hang up or it will load but break things. So if you're running a modded game, really, you can save games, but you should never go back to the um, go back to the menu and reload. You need to quit and start the game fresh and load it up. So now maybe you understand why if it takes minutes to quit, it does become rather frustrating. So for me, instant return to desktop is an absolute essential mod. Improved Public Transport 2 by Bloody Penguin or IPT2. So what this mod does is adds a few features without changing the mechanics too much of how public transport actually operates. There are mods that really let you get into a phenomenal amount of detail about public transport. Uh, they're just kind of too much for me because I kind of think, I'm, you know, it's part of the game. I don't want to turn it into a whole game in itself. But if we just have a look at uh, IPT2, how it's working in my game and what I'm sort of using it for, primarily, I'm actually using it for um, just just so if I want to, I can ha I can add different buses onto a single line. In the default game, you can have different assets, but a line can only have one asset running on it. Whereas what you can do in this, if you wanted to, uh, by clicking on uh, select types, it shows you all the assets that are available to you, bus being the, the old default bus. And if you wanted to, you could, you can see I've got all of the same type on here, but I could put in um, a different bus. And if I did, as it says there, if I do shift click, it will um, basically put it in the queue. And as you can see there, it says number of vehicles, seven of eight. And if I leave that as it is and go over to my bus depot, wherever it is, it's there and unpause the game and hopefully when when it kind of catches on that I've done that there you go so a double decker bus is rolling out of the depot to join the others on that line um, and that's it so there's IPT that's what I'm using it for anyway so there's IPT2 by Bloody Penguin Clyte's Fine Road Anarchy uh, 2 which is an update of the original by uh, Sam Sam T and what this does very basically look at the pictures that are coming up it lets you create junctions that the game won't let you create is what i'm using it for anyway not to do anything particularly silly but for instance sometimes um you've drawn in a road then you maybe you've drawn in a road that you're kind of wanting uh, to make like a t-junction with it but the original road is too close so it it just basically won't let that happen you're not trying to do anything silly you're just trying to just uh, just get into the uh, the road that's kind of at the top of the T-junction, if you like. Um, and this just allows you just to do that little stubby road just to connect it, rather than having to delete the road back and then make it slightly longer so that it will actually allow you to connect. It does let you do other things like um, very sort of uh, fine angles on junctions, but to be honest, sometimes that creates more trouble than it's worth so I tend to use it quite sparingly really just to just to help me um, do junctions not so much like that on the screen now but just maybe just to um, just to put little stubs in to make connections that otherwise I'd have to delete the road back a bit and then redo it slightly longer but it does all sorts of stuff so yeah it's, it's a handy it's a handy mod to uh, have in the toolbox as it were Left hand network fix by Cuboid. So this is this is by no means essential. This is just a nice to have, and you only need it if you are uh, you have your map set to uh, use um, basically to drive on the left, like it's sort of UK style. And the reason why this mod exists is that the way the game, when you're placing an asset, even if you've got the map set to left hand, it shows you the sort of right hand version of the asset. So like a road. Let's say you've got a road where there's only a pavement on one side and it's on the passenger side. So um, it would show you the road with the pavement on the right hand side because that's the way that it would be for right hand drive on right hand traffic. Um, and sometimes it can just be, you just have to do a bit of mental gymnastics sometimes to kind of think, okay, it should be the other way around when I actually when I actually put it down. Because as soon as you put it down, the, the game flips it and, and does it correctly for left-hand traffic. So all this mod actually does is 
the preview is the same as the actual, you know, placed um, asset. So it's not a lot and it's not really essential, but it's kind of a nice to have. Loading screen mod by Thal5. Um, this does quite a lot of stuff and it, it really is something that's very useful if you're running a modded game. So let's see, it loads up uh, the game faster because it uses a, basically a custom loader. Uh, it helps with memory management. It, it does things like it looks for um, duplicated uh, assets or parts of assets. So let's say you've downloaded a building pack of say a, say a dozen buildings and the mod author may have actually used certain shared components so it may maybe used a, a, a texture that's the same across uh, all the buildings. By default, if you were using the normal loader, it would load in those 12 buildings and it would load that texture in 12 times, one for each building. Whereas with this, if you've got the loading screen mod enabled, it'll load in the texture for building number one. It'll then recognize that it's the same thing for all the other buildings. And instead of loading that texture in and filling up your memory, it just goes, okay, I'll just create a little reference to the memory location where that first texture is. And that's a lot um, less heavy on the memory than actually loading the full texture in a dozen different times. Um, it will report on missing bits and bobs. So uh, you sometimes get this, uh, if you've downloaded an asset or an asset pack or something from from the workshop and haven't read the description properly and realised that as well as that, to make it work properly, you've also got to download various other things from different places, which they haven't included in the actual pack. So that will give you a warning of that. You'll see uh, something in red, which says that you know this particular thing is missing. Uh, and it gives you that you can, if you want to, you can have the output of the loading screen of the, the report. You can have that saved as a file, which helps you with troubleshooting. So all in all, it's, it's a really useful mod if you're using mods and custom assets. Move it by Cuboid. Um, I probably don't use it to its full potential. Uh, I just use move it to do things like just move assets around uh, if they're in the way. Like, oh, for instance, how did I manage that? I've got a couple of trees that are in the road in this particular uh, case. So move it, the icon is there and I can select, that's the sort of point select. So I'm just selecting an individual thing and I'm just kind of just dragging it out of the way. And the reason why it was a bit jerky there, I've got snapping on, so um, I can take that off and find control that. Um, so the basics of move it is it, it moves things. Um, but you can do um, you can do rather cheaty things with it as well. Um, I'll show you this. It's not something I promise. This is not something I do, but the the, the potential is there. So let's say uh, I mean I've got a very healthy bank balance, but uh, and that's not because I'm cheating. But let's say that you're you're on your uppers. You're desperate to get a high school in somewhere for whatever reason. You don't want to take a loan or you can't take a loan. Uh, well, if you attempted, what you could do using Move It is you could select the asset that you want. So in this case, you want to select that high school. And then there's an option to copy. And just look at my bank balance. So 822,407. I need to, I want to put the snapping back on so I can get it sort of in, in place. And hopefully that'll... There we go. And I probably need to just... I just need to rotate that a little bit. So let's just make that a bit neater. There we go. So I now have a high school. There we go. If I let the game run, it should say that it's operating there. I'll look at my bank balance. It's actually gone up a touch because I let the game run again. But basically that cost me a grand total of nothing to, um, to basically replicate that high school. Yes, it's a cheat. Uh, and it basically it's between you, it's all between you and your conscience really as to what you do. But if you wanted it, that option is there. And there's a lot of other things as well that I'm not going to get into in a very quick discussion of mods. But there you go, that is Move It. Network Multitool by Muck Sergi. Um, this is a bit of a placeholder really. I downloaded this because it was recommended by one of the city planner types. I think it might have been Sam Burr. I haven't actually used it yet. So when I do use it in my next playthrough, I'll update this, uh, this part of the video.
Optimized Outside Connections by Cuboid. So this mod is designed to uh, optimize the rail traffic, air traffic, and uh, boat. This is this looks like a passenger boat, but it's actually cargo that we're interested in. It's designed so that they basically wait longer before they start their journey into your city. And the idea is that they're they're they've got more goods on them, and so uh, that you don't have this massive stream of say trains that are virtually empty coming into your city and just generally clogging up your rail network and the same goes for boats and the same goes for for uh, for air for all that matter um that's it really it's uh, you've got to be a bit careful with it um you can um make it make them wait longer but then you've you've got a, a, a slight worry that maybe some of your factories will run out of uh, raw materials the suggestion is that if say for a power station you may want to put a warehouse if you've got the industries DLC um, close by so that it can be stocked up with coal or oil or whatever it is that your power station needs. But the idea really is is just to reduce unnecessary traffic on um, on some of your uh, large vehicle networks. Picker by Cuboid. So a bit like the clone tool in Move It, this. Um, this allows you, I'll show you, this allows you to find an asset uh, that you want to um, to duplicate. So let's say that, that tree there. Uh, you can do one of two things. You can hover over it and um, you can click T to sort of uh, start the mode off or just click the eyedropper tool down there. Uh, it's now active. If you click, uh, what it'll do is you've got the, uh, it's now ready to go but notice that if i look notice the little tooltip next to the tree this is actually going to charge me so um, you can basically duplicate the clone tool in move it but uh, without without tarnishing your halo so that's picker by bloody penguin so this mod allows you to place props and trees <clears throat> within other assets let me show you uh so let's um Let's find something a bit dull that's got a bit of space. Um, oh, I can't find anything dull. Must be something. Okay, just to give you an idea. So um, I want, I'm going to stick another tree in this kind of garden area here. So uh, let's um, let's use picker. Let's select that. And what I can do because I've got the anarchy switched on, I can just pop that down in there. Whereas if I had that switched on, if I tried to place something there, it would be basically warning me to that it wants to demolish this. So that's allowed me to add into uh, an existing asset. So uh, that's prop and tree anarchy. Prop line tool by Alteron. Uh, what this allows you to do is put down props in a line. Um, <laughs> that sounds a bit obvious, doesn't it? Let me show you. It's easier. Uh, let's grab, uh, let's grab one of them. And what you've got is you've got these uh, sort of functions here. So I want to sort of put this down in a line. And there's just a, there's just sort of a simple uh, demonstration. There we go. And then escape to come out. Let's try something else. Let's um, let's grab another one of them. Let's find a roundabout. That'll do. And what you what you're going to try and do is you're going to try and find sort of um, sort of dead center. Um, that. Say so it's there, and then drag out. That might be slightly off. You have to sort of tune it a bit but this is just a very quick demo so there you go that's about that you can control the spacing and and such like uh the, the, there's tutorials online uh there's a lot to uh there's a lot to do in this uh in this in this particular mod but there you go quick demo prop line tool prop precision by samsam ts um very simply really uh, what it does is it gives you fine fine like pixel level control um, of your uh, of placing props uh, why do you need that well let's say you've uh, you've got a fence and then well I keep showing in that picture uh, and you want the you want to draw a second fence and you want the 
end of the fence to exactly intersect with the end of the previously drawn fence. So basically maybe you want to make a corner and you want the corner posts to sort of overlap so it looks like just one post rather than like a bit of a, a, a chunky double post. Depending on how that first fence has been placed, if you don't have prop precision on, you may struggle. Um, you might get lucky and it might be in, in the right spot uh, for the other one to drop onto, but more often than not, there'll be a tiny little gap. Whereas prop precision, just let, it literally is down to the pixel. Uh, you could drop the end of that fence, you could drag and drop the end of that fence right onto the end of the other fence, for example. Um, it just gives you fine control over your prop placement. Rebalanced Industries by Cuboid. Um, so pretty much like it says on the tin, it rebalances uh, some of the mechanics in the Industries DLC. So it, for instance, uh, just going off the screenshot here, uh, it reduces the number of workers that are needed in, in certain of the uh, industrial production areas like uh, crop fields, etc. Uh, and then there's a corresponding increase uh, in the number of people who are employed in the factories. Uh, what it also does is it um, it changes the mechanics of how the uh, cargo trucks and such like work. So basically they they hang around a little bit longer and pick up more goods before they start trundling around. So basically it reduces the sort of spamming of um, of industrial uh, vehicles uh, clogging up your roads, which is a, which is a good thing. Um, you need to have a read of the uh, of the mod page because it explains. There's some things that you need to be aware of uh, in terms of what that will mean to your game. So it's a good mod to have, but just read and see what you uh, what you may need to change in the way you do industry um, if you're using this mod. Relight by Ronnie X69. Uh, this mod just gives you really fine control over the lighting in your game. I mean, I know you can use uh, LUTs to uh, put a sort of a preset on. But let me show you, uh, let's get into the game. Um, what is it? Uh, Shift Alt L. Uh, and you get an idea. Um, you can this you can you can really sort of like tweak up um the look uh of your game. It's one of those mods uh, you need to do um as you can see from the required items, this you see a few that say ability to read. Um so yeah, basically that's kind of a warning that you need to actually read through the instructions properly. Uh, otherwise, there are certain things, for instance, you need to um, sort of say, yes, you need to uh, monkey around with the shadow strength because otherwise it kind of looks a bit weird. Um, but it's worth having uh, if you want to just kind of fine con fine tune uh, your lighting in your game. Roundabout Builder by Strad. This is a nifty little tool. I'll just uh, show you. Let's create an intersection. Uh, let's go with this. Uh, so just quick and dirty. Pop that down there. Uh, draw that out there. Draw that out there. That'll do. Right. So go into roundabout builder. Put it on the center. Use the plus and minus keys to adjust the size of the roundabout. Click. And there we go. Roundabout Builder by Strad. Shadow Strength Adjuster by Running X69. Um, the only reason I've got this is the Relight mod said I had to have it uh, to fix a problem that, uh, that it itself introduces. So that's the only reason that is in the uh, mod list. Traffic Manager President Edition by a few people. Uh, Linux Fan, Fire Controller number 1847, Kyan Zarin, uh, Critchu 1245, sorry, I'm, I'm sure I've mispronounced that, and uh, Aubergine 18. This is quite a complicated mod. When they come with their own manual, um, <laughs> you know, there's quite a lot going on. Um, there'll be proper tutorials on this online, but I'll just show you the very basics of it. Uh, traffic Manager, uh, let's get rid of that. Traffic Manager uh, gives you a whole bunch of different options. You can change, um, you can change speeds on roads. You can uh, restrict roads so that you can say, um, I don't know, you can make it buses only, for instance, by um, doing that. For example, um, you can play with the uh, lane filtering so that you can, um, you know, at the moment, the left on lane is for left on turns only, but you could say left on turn, left on lane. Uh, just you could, no, let's say you could say lane two is for straight ahead only. Um, so I'll get rid of that. Uh, 
and that and then as you can see it's changed the arrow there um you can do uh let's show you this you can basically say that you want um traffic in that lane to be able to go to there and to there uh there's all sorts you need to have a really serious play with this but this is a mod that will let you that will help you uh sort, sort out um traffic problems that you may be having ultimate eye candy by judas um what this allows you to do it basically gives you uh, a bunch of controls over your uh, graphic settings if i um in if I just do shift and U. Uh, so what you can do is you can manually set uh, day night time. I find this useful if I come into the map and start wanting to build and it's uh, it's right in the middle of the night. And uh, so you're over here and it's all a bit it's all a bit vague. Um, you can um, just bring it into a into daylight and then uh, get your um, get your building done. You can set latitude and longitude and that sort of thing so that you can um, um, you can have a sort of more realistic um, daylight look for the um, for the sort of place that you uh, that you're that you're building. Uh, you can um, you can save all this stuff as presets so that you can just uh, you know you've got it everything um, set up and then you can just uh, load it in as a preset for whichever map you happen to be playing. Uh, you can apply uh, LUTs uh, which change the general look and feel. That's um, you have to download these, but let's give you just an example. Um, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So you can do a lot with this. Hmm, quite like the vibrant, actually. Um, hmm. <laughs> oh dear. Um, let's go with neutral. Um, right, so there you go. That's Ultimate Eye Candy. Zoning Toolset by Archangel. Uh, what this is used for is. I'll try and find a good example. Um, if I go into my roads here, I'm trying to find somewhere that I haven't developed. That's basically what you find is that when roads join together, you get kind of sometimes get a bit of a like this, for instance. Now I've already zoned this, so this is going to be a problem. But you get kind of a like a clash between the zoning that's on this road and the zoning that's on this road. <clears throat> Let's say that I. Um, Let's say that I wanted this zoning to take precedence. Uh, what I would do is I would click um, here and get rid of that. And then you see what's happened is it's it's unfortunately it's taken the zoning out of there. But this zoning has uh, had more room to move into. So it's it's not a perfect tool, um, but it basically lets you choose when you have that sort of clash. Uh, which which road is the one that's going to be built off, basically. So there you go. Zoom it by Kialu. Very simple, this. Uh, basically just lets you zoom in closer and zoom out more on the map. So I, with zoom it, I can, let's just come out of that, I can get right in, or I can come all the way out. Um, so it basically just removes the... Um, the sort of stops, if you like, that are in the standard game, and uh, just gives you um a bigger range of zoom that's that's what it does well guys i hope you found that uh, useful and uh, that's about it for this video so i ho hope you enjoyed i uh, hope to see you along on uh, some of the uh, future videos that i am making and uh, until i uh, catch up with you next time i hope you stay well and i'll see you very soon bye now